Hello everyone and welcome to TBR's webinar, IBM and everyone else. How and when will BI service vendors dethrone IBM or even start to catch up? Insights from TBR's BI Professional Services Benchmark Research Report. I'm Justin Surgent and I'm hosting today's webinar. According to TBR research, the business intelligence service market is growing 12 to 14 percent per year and IBM is dominating the market. However, as software vendors transition from offering services to supporting clients, IT services vendors are bringing solutions to, mar to market aggressively and are expected to far exceed that growth rate. In the next 45 minutes, we'll cover what's shaping this market and what business models you should be aware of. Before I pass this over to Patrick, Jen, and Matt, there are a few housekeeping items I'd like to cover. First, we will be recording today's session and posting it on our YouTube site, TBRI channel. We encourage you to visit our channel and watch this presentation or any of the others we've posted. Second, we'd like to hear your opinions and thoughts on the material we're presenting. Please send any questions or comments to the Q&A or chat function. One of the analysts will adjust them at the end of the presentation. Or, if you'd like to set up a client inquiry for a detailed discussion, please reach out directly to an analyst at the end of the webinar to set up that discussion. Third, we'll send out the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the webinar. You can also find the slides, as well as our thought leadership pieces, other webinars, and commentaries on SlideShare at www.slideshare.net slash tbr underscore market underscore insight. Now let me introduce Jen Hamill, Patrick Heffernan, and Matt Healy. Jen practiced law for several years before joining TBR and is the lead in our BI services research along with covering the cloud and management consulting markets and a company focused on HCL technologies, TCS, Repro, Cognizant, Genpact, and Xerox. Patrick is a State Department Deloitte alumni and leads our professional service research team along with our resident expertise on the management consulting market. Matt is our principal software and services analyst. Their knowledge of market dynamics across the services landscape is providing the expertise and insight that empowers their clients to make faster or profitable business investments. And with that, let me hand it over to Patrick. Excellent. Thank you very much. And this is probably the 10th or 11th or 12th maybe webinar that I've done uh, since arriving at TBR about a year and a half uh, ago, a year and a half years ago. And um, one of the things that strikes me in preparing for this webinar is that I, I think we probably have a spectrum of folks here that, that know, on one end, that know a lot about business intelligence and analytics, but probably don't know TBR. And then we probably have a lot of folks who know TBR and know our research, but are just getting familiar with business intelligence and, and analytics. So hopefully what I want is that everybody comes away from this, this webinar knowing more about the, the entire spectrum. And so please ask questions, um, even if it's clarifying questions about either how we do our research how, or how TBR works um, or exactly what it is that we're covering here with uh, business intelligence services. Um, so as you can see on this slide, what we have on the left is how the clients uh, that buy our benchmark use our research. Um, and then on the far right, you can see that the BI services benchmark is part of a larger portfolio uh, of business intelligence products around both services and software, looking at it from both a, um, a vendor perspective and then a, uh, a customer research perspective as well. Um, so with that sort of broad introduction, we're going to get into a lot of the details. Um, and again, please ask questions, even, even sort of a please explain what you mean by kind of question, because I know that a lot of folks on the line probably aren't either familiar again with BI or familiar with TBR. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Jen. Thanks, Patrick. So uh, just to start out, I, I wanted to give an overview of what we were looking at in this benchmark. We looked at a broad spectrum of vendors, and after compiling the data, we found that groups of similarly structured vendors performed similarly, with IBM standing out as a leader by revenue and breadth of capabilities. So we have the vendor groups uh, listed here that we looked at. We'll, we'll go into each one in detail further in the presentation. Um, and we'll identify which vendors we think are primed to take share and which will have a tougher time catching up. But first I'll turn it back over to Patrick to give an overview of the broader BI services market. So when we put business intelligence and analytics in the context of, context of IT services, 
more generally. What we're seeing is not surprisingly that BI is growing considerably faster, 12 to 14 percent uh, a year over the last few years and, and looking forward compared to one to at best two percent for IT services more generally. And, and, it, and it makes sense. BI is, and analytics is it's part of all these emerging technologies. It's tied to cloud. Uh, it's tied to big data. Um, IT services has, has gone through some upheaval around again, around cloud, but around um, the quantitization of, of a lot of IT services. Um, and when you look at, I guess what jumps out here to me, when you look at the, um, the barriers on the left side there, at, at least two of them, um, the, the software vendor entrenchment and the, the unclear value of additional BI services, those are things that the BI services vendors can tackle and are tackling uh, right now. So those are barriers to growth that I think are going to be overcome. And then if you look at on the right side, you have some of those, those drivers and at least two of them, operational efficiency and, and industry expertise. Those things are not going to go away. They're not, even as business intelligence and analytics matures, even as the vendors change uh, how they provide these services, there's still going to be a demand from clients for better operational efficiency and for uh, services vendors to bring industry expertise and, and industry specific BI solutions to the table. So I think if we look at the market as a whole, we're, we're confident in what we see that it's going to continue to grow this way. Before I dive into the, the vendors and compare them, the benchmark vendors and compare them to the, the market as a whole, I want to turn it over to Matt to give us a much broader picture of what's happening in BI generally, services, software, the entire mix. Matt? All right. Thanks, Patrick. And, and for anyone who's been on any of these webinars, uh, I, I really kind of like my role because I'm the one who gets to wander between software and services and basically provide color commentary. So in the BI services market, I think it's important that you keep in mind where we are in terms of the services market. So you need to start by Services markets go through a typical evolution. Generally, you start to see consulting that is basically much more a pre-sales type consulting around a new technology when that technology is very new and people don't really understand it. It's very dominated by the technology provider, whether that's hardware or software. Then over time, that, that pre-sales consulting turns into much more of strategy consulting, much more feed type services where people can actually build a business on it, but it's still dominated by, those, by the technology providers. Then you start you, your transition into main for, mainstream, and in that, in that um, phase, the roles change and it, the IT and the, the market begins to be transmitted from the technology provider whose real business in this case is writing software, not providing services, um, over to the global systems integrators and the services specific organizations. And then after a few years after that, the market dies. And by dies, it doesn't mean it goes away, but what happens is it ceases to become a distinct thing. And if you think about it, if you go back to the late 90s, there were companies that did internet consulting. And now those companies do consulting because there's no additional value. I mean, how far would an IBM or a Deloitte get if they came in and said, oh, and we can help you get onto the internet? Well, it's table stakes at this point. So it doesn't die in terms of the skill set goes away. It dies in that everyone assumes you can do it. We're beginning from what I see that transition from the technology provider into the services provider, which plays exactly to what Jen had said about why IBM is unique. Here is a technology provider with a strong BI software offering, and they've got this IBM global services thing, which is kind of big and really very capable for services. They are very unique in this market right now in that they can do that. And I think that for the services providers who are not IBM, you're going to have to keep at least one eye on what IBM is doing, especially if you want to compete in the large enterprise space. Um, so with that, I will turn it back to Patrick. Uh, absolutely perfect. Perfect segue into the next slide we're going to look at, which is to look at how these benchmark vendors, including, of course, IBM, uh, fair, fared over the last year and what we see um, kind of going forward. Uh, it, it's clear from our research, and, and, and our research in this area has included both the vendor-specific research that is at the heart of this particular benchmark, but then also the customer buying behavior, the customer-centric research that we've also done in this space, that 
the, the established vendors, the ones that have speed, that have scale, that have the things that, that Matt just described, those things are so critical to successful implementation and, and sustained delivery of, I, of BI services that um, those, those vendors have a huge advantage. Um, and one other quick word on, on the data that underlies this entire benchmark. Um, if you look at this slide alone, we use the word estimated four times. Um, now, we have applied the same rigor uh, that we put into all of our analysis here at TBR. We've, we've applied the same taxon, or we've applied a taxonomy for BI services that, that we know captures the market in a way that allows us to benchmark the vendors. We've applied the same rigor around our methodology. We've applied 18 plus years of, of collecting and analyzing and understanding data. However, this is the first edition of this benchmark. Um, this is the first time we've pulled this particular uh, analysis together. So we know we're going to be making adjustments. When you look at this, if you see something that's wildly high or wildly low, uh, we'd love to get that feedback. We're open to it. Um, and just to be clear, as we go forward and continue to analyze this market, which is not is not going to die as soon as Matt said it's going to die. Oh, no, 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 I don't think it's going to die soon. I think that the next phase in its evolution is right. death. And, um, but I think that that is a good three to five years away. And by the way, services markets die. All markets die. I mean, you know, it's just the way that it is. It, there's no pejorative in there. It, it, it's just going to happen. Right. That's so what taxes, right? So we're we're going to continue to um, we're going to continue to make adjustments on how we understand this market. I just want to throw that out there as an explanation. Of these are estimates uh, based on a very rigorous uh, approach and a, and a very detailed set of data that we're working with. But um, that way, if you see something up there that's wildly surprising, you'll know why it's wildly surprising. So. That gives you the vendors as they are compared to the benchmark. Now we'll, we'll go back to Jen to explain a little bit about the customer research that I mentioned and how it's, it's tied into this. And, and before we jump back to Jen, I do also want to come on to this. I, I want to make, I want to re reiterate one point I made um, last time, ye yesterday on the software benchmark. The services benchmark is tied to the services associated with the BI software. The BI software taxonomy is also available, and there are some critical differences between ourselves and some of the other research houses out there. So one of the critical differences that arises is around data warehousing and the way we treat that. As a result of that, our BI software numbers around data warehousing tend to be low, so the consulting and the systems integration associated with data warehousing and the other softwares will also differ, even if the poultry ratios that we use were the same. So you cannot view, or you should not, you can do anything you want, you should not view the BI services taxonomy in isolation. You should view it as, as the software taxonomy um, as well. Right. And, and we'll now pass it to Jen. Thanks, Matt. So just wanted to give a, a plug for the BI software uh, webinar yesterday. Uh, I thought it went really well, and I think there will be a link on YouTube. You know, as Justin mentioned earlier, all these webinars are available on YouTube, so I encourage everyone to, to check that out when you have a chance. Um, so I guess moving to the next slide, we mentioned our customer study a few times, so I think here's a good place to talk about where the, the, the customer research and the vendor benchmarking intersect. The reason we did the customer study first is we really wanted to be able to under, you know, understand what customers are buying and that would help us understand what the vendors are, how the vendors are meeting those needs. So here's just a snapshot from that report. We surveyed uh, buying trends across the four service lines um, and I'll, I'll go through them now. We have a definition uh, slide at the end of the presentation. Everyone on the, the webinar who's registered will get a copy of it and you can go through it in detail and let me know if there are questions. But just generally, uh, we're looking at four major service lines, consulting, uh, systems integration, application development and maintenance, and then operations management. So these are the four areas that we are surveying both in the, the customer research and in the benchmark. So across the service lines, survey respondents attributed higher importance to the relationship with their BI services vendor on a business and industry specific level than they did to the, the vendor's expertise around BI software infrastructure. Um, the reason for, oh, just another point from the study, um, we also found that relationships are the most important factors for customers that are considering BI solutions. 
with the number one influencer being the advisor and the systems integrator partner. So these two findings really play a key role in the, the vendor benchmarking um, that we did. And we found just looking at the revenue results that it, it confirmed what we, what we saw in the customer study, that the, the consulting, not to steal Patrick Sunder, but the consulting vendors are, are really those, the ones that are um, faring the best in, in the BI services market right now. And, and what I want to just dovetail in here just a little bit for color commentary is it is not surprising at all that the working knowledge of my specific um, industry scored very highly, especially associated with the advisory strategy and consulting services. Um, the reason being this is a somewhat new market to a lot of people. It, it is both a very new market but also a very old one. And We've been doing analytics for a very long time, but some of the new and advanced analytics uh, capabilities are somewhat new. And so organizations that are looking at this are trying to figure out what does it mean for me, WIFM, what's in it for me? And so an organization that can come in and say, this is what analytics will give you is good. But an organization that comes in and says, this is what I can do for you in the automotive parts manufacturing industry in North America, well, that gets you a lot further, especially in some of these other and trial cases kind of explorations that people are doing with BI. If I had to give any piece of advice to the strategy like consultants, it would be lead with knowledge of the industry and um, what can actually be done in that organization from that organization's perspective. I think you'll win the most in this market in that area. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And just to sort of add on, I think the the industry-specific knowledge as well as being able to hold the client's hand throughout the implementation process. These, these tools are they're complex, they involve business critical data, so trust is really the most important uh, aspect of these relationships. Um, and so as we'll see on the next slide, um, consulting and systems integration being, as Matt mentioned earlier, sort of the leading um, service that is going on right now in the, in the BI services market, it's no surprise that it's also the largest and the fastest growing that we found in our, in our uh, vendor benchmark. So first, um, just to give a, a brief overview, um, I, I, I mentioned the service lines, I mentioned the customer study, um, and just as, as far as the findings from the study, um, but like we mentioned before, the advisory services have the highest adoption. Um, and then followed by systems integration. So we're seeing right now um, that, that consulting systems integration are um, a, a top priority for, for clients and it's showing in, in the revenue. Um, and it's, uh, application development is uh, the smallest segment, it's the slowest growing, and there are a couple of reasons that we see for this. Um, there, there are a lot of off the shelf and um, cloud-based BI products available, which is reducing the need for app customization. And also, um, application development as in general across the IT services industry is becoming more commoditized. There are a lot of new players, a lot of competition, and so prices are going down. So we're seeing that reflected in the, the revenues that we uh, captured here. So as the solutions become more complex uh, and involve multiple sources of data, um, both structured and unstructured from a variety of sources. We're expecting that customers are going to look to operations management services providers to run the entire BI environment uh, so that they can devote more resources to, to their business critical tasks and to just let a services provider run the, run the um, BI program for them. And just a, a quick note about the, the statement on the bottom. Um, this, is, this is from our customer study as well. We found that um, more than two-thirds of the, the respondents surveyed expect a positive return on their investment within two years, and nearly half of them expect it within a year. So the, the ability to, um, to deliver the value in, in the BI solution is, is paramount, um, and, and we see that uh, managed services being uh, the key level, lever for that going forward. Yeah, and, and that does scale to what I had, I had said before for the strategy consulting and, and some of the other types of lead with the consulting and what is in it for them rather than leading with all of your technical expertise. 
as this market matures, and in two to three years, you will be talking about leading with your technical expertise because people will have a better understanding of the business model and they will know what they can get. Everybody knows what you can get out of CRM right now. What they don't know is what can I get on, out of analytics for certain customers on CRM. So that's why it depends upon what you're doing. We have a lot of studies that say lead with technical knowledge. This market lead with consulting knowledge and business model knowledge. You'll be in a better place. So at this point, I think we are we're done with the, the kind of overall macro view of the business uh, the uh, professional services market. So we're going to move into the vendor landscape discussion. We'll start with IBM. It's in the title of the webinar. It should be no surprise that we'll start uh, with them. Um, they dominated the, bar the benchmark in nearly all of the segments, and clearly um, in by revenue um, overall. So this is a, a bubble chart, uh, just to sort of give you uh, a sense of what we're looking at here. This is a bubble chart from the uh, published benchmark, and. Um, Normally, in, in TBR reports, you'll see a bubble chart with all of the vendors highlighted with, with arrows pointing, and it's you know very a little bit busy. It's a mess. It's a little bit, but you know we, it's obviously varied. We do have that chart as well. But is it, we thought for these um, you know vendor discussions, it was really uh, a little bit more impactful to show uh, the vendor groups individually. Um, so the rest of the bubbles will, will reveal all of them as we go through. But for right now. We're, we're looking at IBM. So as Matt mentioned earlier, you know, IBM holds a unique position among the BI services vendors in that it's aggressively pursuing the BI market in both software and services. They're among the leaders in vendor incidents in both of our customer studies, software and services, and the others being uh, SAP, Oracle, and Microsoft. But the, unlike those other vendors, IBM is committed to services as an integral part of its BI portfolio and not just an add-on to sell software, although that's an added benefit. <laughs> um, and the evidence of this that we have seen this year is the creation of the strategy and analytics practice. What they did is they merged their analytics, their strategy from team, and their IBM Interactive Experience consulting group uh, into one unit within GBS, Global Business Services. They've organized the practice into to different practice areas based on executive roles and focusing on data-driven solutions that address particular business outcomes to those executive roles. So for example, they have interactive experience now that's focused on the chief marketing officer. They recently uh, announced the change in, in talent management practice that focuses on the chief uh, HR officer. So we're seeing Right now, what, what, what's making IBM successful in the BI services market is they're leading the strategy with, with business and LOB focused strategy and following through with the analytics tools that um, can, can deliver insights that, um, that affect those outcomes. And they appeal both to the non-IT department buyer, so that the, they appeal to the, um, the non-CIO buyer but they have the technology legacy to speak directly to the IT department. So with concerns about security and interoperability, they can also speak to those concerns as well. Uh, and as Matt mentioned before, they have the scale to see everything to everyone and, and provide the, the full stack of BI, but they also work with partners. They work with software vendors such, such as SAP and Oracle and Teradata. So they, they really have their hands in, across, across the market. Yeah, and, and that's why one of the things I think is IBM is in such a unique position um, is because unlike a lot of the pure high-end strategy firms, you know, the Deloitte, EY, CAS, CSCs of the world, um, or the high-end analytics providers, whether they be the multi-launch SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, or some of the smaller organizations, you know, Click, Tableau, uh, Splunk, Burst, et cetera, um, IBM is one of the few that can actually go from the strategy role through GPS into the deployment of their software or someone else's software if they need and, you know, be able to straddle that, that, uh, that, that divide. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, Deloitte and EY can't guarantee an outcome the same way IBM can, but um, Deloitte and EY need to leverage somebody else's software. And I'm not saying SAP and Splunk can't do it, but they oftentimes need to leverage someone else's services. IBM it can straddle both of them and has made analytics a linchpin of their strategy going forward. That's why I can't talk about them enough in terms of how unique they are and why I think they're a real force, especially if you want to service their client base 
which is the large enterprise. So um, we're seeing that the other services-led competitors are trying to replicate IBM's LLB focused model, as, as Patrick will discuss in a few slides. But before we get there, I wanted to look at the two vendor groups that most align most closely with IBM's technology legacy, starting with the software-centric firms on the next slide. Um, and I mentioned these earlier um, just as they were the highest adopted vendors that we saw in our studies for, for CI services. Um, but this is, this is one area of divergence between the study and the benchmark, uh, whereas a lot of the other findings aligned between the two reports. Um, we, although it, from the customer study, it looked like um, SAP, Oracle, and Microsoft were leading the market, in, in terms of revenue, it's clear that um, this is not a, not a growth area for them, and it's certainly not a profitable one. Um, so just kind of, I guess, talking about the, the study one more time, um, we, I guess, going back to what Patrick mentioned about the barriers to, to CI services adoption, um, there are a couple of reasons that we thought that the software vendors scored so highly in the study, but um, we're not seeing that in the, in the revenue. And that's just the unfamiliarity that customers see, uh, the customers have with what BI services vendors even do. Um, there may have been a services vendor involved, but they are seeing SAP, they're using an SAP tool, they're assuming that SAP is the one delivering the services. Um, or in the case of IBM, you know, they're discovering that they can get all the services they need, including strategy, from one vendor. So that's, that explains IBM's um, kind of unique position from these other software software vendors. Um, and as we discussed um, in the, the BI study webinar and in the BI software webinar, um, BI services is a market that SAP, Oracle, and Microsoft are in out of necessity, but they would much rather partner with services vendors uh, to deliver the, the advisory and the in, in integration services. Um, services vendors are, are much better suited to handle the customization and the integration side of implementations, and in the software software vendors' minds, that's the role that <laughs> they prefer them to play as, as they can, so they can focus on the software. So, Matt, do you have anything to add to that? So, no. From well, I do, um, but from a software perspective, I, I the reason I'm all right. So, no, I have nothing to add other than things that I've already added. The software vendors make their money writing and selling software. Microsoft makes a lot of money selling Microsoft Power BI and their analytics capabilities within Dynamics, the SQL Server database. They are going to run the Microsoft playbook, which is they are going to provide services to end users to seize the market for their tools and their advanced tools. They are going to develop intellectual property around it, and then they are going to push it into the massive Microsoft channel that is aimed squarely at the mid-market. Um, SAP is going to run the SAP playbook, which is they are going to stay engaged in critical accounts from a services perspective so that they know how HANA and the HANA platform is being um, developed, but you will then see that they will start pushing it out into their global systems integrator partnerships. I mean, and that will include IBM, but it will also include, you know, EY and Deloitte and organizations like that. Um, and then Oracle is going to continue to go through their, their um, strategy of trying to make the services as kind of make their systems not need as many services, hence the engineered systems and et cetera. But these organizations make their money on software. They are going to provide services to the extent to which it sells software. And if they can have channel partners help them sell their software, which is what they are after selling, then they will do that. So beyond that, it does not surprise me that all of these organizations are going to start, you know, they will see their services growth drop, they will see their operating margins drop, and this is by design because it will help them sell software through their channel. And so with that, I will, I will pass it back to Jen. So just let's move to the next slide and talk about the hardware-centric vendors. Um, here we're seeing sort of a, an opposite trend, um, still, you know, not very profitable, but on the other side of, of the growth, the average growth line. Um, they, they're they among the fastest growing players in the BI services um, market that we, that we benchmarked, but they account for the smallest portion of revenue. Um, and this is due to their relatively late entry into the market. 
Um, vendors such as HP, they're looking to leverage their investments in cloud, which has been a, a priority for them in recent years, and are building BI platforms on top of that, such as Haven, to run in cloud em environments uh, with the goal of, of managing the entire uh, IT environment, including BI. But given the more limited consulting capabilities of these vendors, we're expecting it'll be a little more difficult for them to gain market share, although they have opportunity among their existing clients that may not wish to bring in a, a, a separate vendor for integration. Yeah, and, and I think that the hardware vendors are going to try. I think they're going to try to move into services, and the reason for that is uh, selling iron at this point in time is becoming harder and harder. The operating margins on x86 servers are low, they're not going to grow anytime in the near future. And so the HPs, the Hitachis, the Fujitsus of the world don't want those low operating margins. Silicon's becoming interchangeable, cloud is under attack, all of these things, and services is a natural growth area for them, so they're going to try to move in that direction. I am I'm, I'm not skeptical of the effort, I'm skeptical of how well it will succeed. Um, it's hard for the infrastructure um, and the hardware vendors to really be able to lead with that strategy consulting type of um, engagement that, you know, an EY and a Deloitte or an IBM or a McKinsey will be able to. Okay, I think with that we can move to the next slide and I'll turn it to Patrick. Thanks. So we're going to look at the, uh, there's two groups left to look at, the India-centric vendors and the, uh, the global consulting and systems integration-centric vendors. And, um, We'll take the Indians, Indians first. They're sort of all grouped together there, but they, they face, well, when we look at this market, they're facing two challenges. One of them, one of the challenges reflects just the nature of these vendors as a whole, and then the second challenge more a reflection of what's happening in the market. So first of all, we all know that consulting, consulting advisory services really lead to larger, longer engagements. That's, that's true across all of IT services, and it's true in, business intelligence services as well. And that's an area where India-centric vendors have traditionally been weak, uh, or at least weaker than their, their CNSI peers. And, and they've invested in consulting capabilities. Every single one of them has, has made a play in that area. Um, but it's, it's, tough to get, it's tough to get talent uh, at the right cost, and it's, it's tough to get permission. You have to hire the right people and retain them, and then you also have to convince clients that you can actually do that kind of consulting level, strategy level, advisory work. Um, the, the second challenge is more about more about ADM, more about software development, and, and clients are no longer looking to these India-centric vendors uh, as as their go-to option there. And what, what that means is, or where that where we're seeing that come out is that it's it's basically it's easier for the consulting-led vendors to build an end-to-end -end BI services portfolio uh, by adding application development and, and maintenance resources. It's easier for them to do that than it is for the India-centric vendors to add the consulting resources that would move them uh, further in the, into a full end-to-end -end package. So they, as the market is shifting, the Indian vendors are, are certainly under a lot of pressure. And th you know, despite this, um, look at what we see on this chart. It's, it's above average profitability. Um, you know, they use a lot of their existing engagements as a, as a jumping off point to cross-sell BI services. They're recruiting and, uh, and reskilling developers to build this analytics expertise in low-cost locations. It's what they do well. Um, and they're increasing the, the leverage of IP-based frameworks uh, and solution accelerators to drive down their labor costs as much as possible. So on the one hand, we see the challenges that they, they're facing in BI services in particular, but on the other hand, these vendors are, the size they are and they're as profitable as they are and they're as strong as they've been over the years for, for very good reasons, and, and those reasons are not significantly changing in, in the BI space. So then the, oh. And, and I, I, want to, I want to provide a little more background on what, what uh, something Patrick said was specifically regard to ADM. One of the things that's going on in the ADM market from a macro perspective is the SAPs, the Oracles, the Burst, the Clicks, the Tableaus of the world are getting better at writing software. The software they produce now is better than it did, was 10 years ago. So what's happening to the custom app market is, as a whole is it's easier now to configure a package out of the box and you're closer to what you need right off the shelf than you used to be. So you don't have these massive custom development efforts the way you did in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, 
that all that market is going away. In a hot area, in an emerging area like BI, it still exists, but I don't have to write a CRM app for almost any vertical at this point in time because SAP or Oracle or Microsoft will let me configure one to do almost exactly what I need and leverage best practices from everybody else, and it'll be right out of the right out of off the shelf. So while they while that market still does exist, I just wanted to provide commentary that it's not where it was ten years ago. Right, and that's an excellent point. And something I have not. I haven't put those two and two together to get to five, so well, that, that's good. It's helpful for me. So we look now at the um, the last vendor group on this, is the uh, the CNSI vendors, and they're all over the map. I mean, even more so than than probably the hardware vendors. Their results are are, are wildly different from Atos to to say Deloitte, um, and and they're a they're sort of a perfect counterpoint to what I was just saying about the India centric vendors. These guys can actually expand. Uh, into into ADM, which which as Matt said is is not um, not a huge rapidly growing market, but at least these guys can expand their own revenue base by getting into that. And and then the second thing is they've already it's already more attractive to go and work for a Deloitte or an Accenture or an Atos um, than it is at least at the high end strategy level of consulting. Um, and also you know the folks that, that do that kind of work are high priced, which makes them unattractive. To the India centric vendor. So it, it allows them to expand in that aspect of the market, which, uh, as we talked about at the very beginning, and what Matt said is you have to lead with, you have to lead with consulting. Well, that's that's what these guys do well. If When we looked at the, uh, further in the, in the benchmark, um, when we looked at the revenues uh, by the different service lines, these vendors here on this slide, they accounted for more than half of all the consulting revenue. Uh, in the first quarter of, of 2014, and, and a big part of that is their their advisory relationships that already exist uh, with the, with clients and, the, and their IT uh, shops, and then their ability to, to really do that business transformation work that is so that that is sort of the reason why you have uh, BI and analytics solutions anyway. So, uh, one more thing, I don't want to steal too much from what Jen is going to say about. Alliance activity in a minute, but there's one vendor on here I do want to point out because, um, like Jen said, these bubble charts they can get a little, little messy at times. Um, Accenture, uh, a couple of key acquisitions in the analytics space. Uh, I four C, and I'm trying to think of what the other one was off the top of my head. Um, I can't remember. Oh well. Um, so some important acquisitions in the analytics space. They reorganized around four growth platforms. Business intelligence and analytics embedded across all four of those those platforms, uh, those growth platforms. Um, they've been very aggressive, as, as, as Jim will show in a minute, in the Align space. Um, I, I think, although you look at them here, and in terms of growth and in terms of um, operating margin and pure apps, that was the other one. Thank you, Jim. Um, that was the other acquisition. Um, I, you know, I think Accenture is is going to going to start to move up into the right in this. Um, I, I think they have got the right pieces in place of the vendors within the space. When we look at this and try to assess, okay, who's who's got momentum on their side, and who's got the, the you know the, the factor the, the growth factors in in the right place. I think it's probably Accenture is, is pretty high on that list. So um, with that, let's talk about alliances a little bit. Right. So exactly as. As Patrick noted, um, you know, Accenture, we have them highlighted here, uh, very active uh, on the alliance front, um, both, you know, new, new alliances and, uh, you know, having well-established ones. So, and, and that kind of goes for all of the, the CNSI vendors. Um, they're, you know, as, as we discussed, they, they're serving as the handholder for clients throughout the implementation process. So uh, to be successful, they're, they're forging strong alliances with BI software vendors, um, and this is what's making them, ha why they're leading and why we believe they'll, they'll continue to lead in this market. So just looking at this, um, just to explain what, what this chart is, um, we want, because we have um, a, a BI services vendor benchmark and a BI software vendor benchmark, we thought it'd be interesting to look at where the two um, Vendor lists intersect. So, uh, you know, which which services vendors are partnering with which software vendors? Um, so, along the left, you'll see the the list of vendors that we cover in the in the services benchmark, and along the top, 
the selected list of, of vendors that we cover in the software benchmark. Um, and so the, the trends that, that we noticed, um, you know, this first round of the benchmark is both an expansion of um, existing alliances, SAP being the most active um, as far as uh, expanding, um, you know, SI relationships, uh, and also uh, some newer alliances with more niche vendors, uh, such as Cloudera, DataStax, and, and Hortonworks, and we're seeing this as um, vendors reacting to the increasing demand for services around open source data platforms. Uh, as clients are looking for more cost-effective ways to store and process large amounts of data. So I know Matt has something to add here. Yeah, and, and, and a while back in this, in this webinar, I, we were talking about the software vendors, and I said that SAP is going to run the SAP playbook in terms of uh, pushing the HANA analytics platform out through their global systems integrators. And look who shows up as brand new partners. CSC, Deloitte, Fujitsu, HCL. Hmm, feels to me like they're expanding within it. Now, uh, granted, they're not going to go, they're not going to color every, every, uh, every box there. I, I specifically see one, Oracle Services, which I really don't think SAP is going to partner with. I also don't think Oracle is going to partner with SAP Services. So I, I think you can pretty much assume that those are going to stay white for a good long time to come. But, um, but that, is, that is the SAP playbook. And, if we had, if, if rather than having it be the 20 covered vendors from a services perspective, we just looked at number of small partners that somebody has expanded their relation or pushed a program out with, I would imagine you would see a big number there for the number of those that Microsoft has worked with because they push that stuff out to their massive ecosystem of small partners, but it's really kind of hard to benchmark a thousand partners all that could be up to 250 employees. We, we can't really do that. We just know there's a lot of them. Okay, so at this point, um, I think we're let's go to the next slide. As I mentioned before, we uh, are including the definitions of our taxonomy. Um, I, I won't spend too much time. I, we, we're getting close to the, the top of the hour, so I want to leave enough time for questions. But uh, this is where we, we break out our four service lines, and you can see that um, you know, we, we have a, a taxonomy that we apply to all the vendors that we look at. We try to make the comparisons apples to apples. So um, you know, vendors report uh, or really even talk about uh, BI services in different ways, but we, we look at um, what, what are they actually offering and put them into the buckets as we, as we define them. Um, so moving to the next slide, uh, this is just an overview of, uh, of the BI uh, research portfolio that Patrick mentioned in the beginning of the presentation. Um, we started with the BI software vendor benchmark last year, or maybe a couple of years ago this time. Um, the, the 2Q14 benchmark just published or is publishing next week. Um, and then over the past year, we've expanded the portfolio to cover both the vendor analysis, including the, the services vendors, and the customer buying behavior. Uh, so the benchmark we discussed today is, is a 1Q benchmark. It published later than our normal cycle, but as I mentioned before, we wanted to incorporate the insights from the customer study um, into our, our first benchmark. And we're now beginning work on the 3Q14 edition, which is going to publish in January. Move to the next one. So th this just gives you a, a sense of how we how we do the research here at TBR, that we, we try to pick the, the topics, we try to pick the themes, we try to understand what is changing in the market uh, that we look at. And when we roll these benchmarks out, and it's every six months, and, and we're looking at, at um, earnings and performance that goes back, you know, in this case we're looking at 1Q14, usually it's, it's one quarter previously or one half year previously. Um, these are, I have to say, these are ideas. These are the things that we as researchers and as analysts, um, the questions that we raise when we look at the market, we're completely open to other questions, of course, because um, you know I'm not sure that we always have the right answers, nor am I always sure that we're asking the right questions. Uh, but this is what we're going to tackle going into uh, the next couple of months as we look at BI services, um, and I think we'll probably this will evolve, of course, uh, over time. I want to now address some of the questions that have come in. Uh, while we've been doing this webinar. And the, the first one is about notable trends in terms of who is buying BI services within 
the different client companies and looking at it by role. Uh, within this particular benchmark, we did not tackle who's buying and by role because that's something that we actually covered in, in detail in the customer research where we looked at uh, we looked at IT buyers, we looked at line of business buyers and, and the differences there. We looked at each individual service offering and how those, uh, how buyers, um, IT versus line of business, uh, made decisions around it, how they, uh, who, who sat in on the decision making process, um, and what some of their, uh, some of the things that they were looking for in terms of, um, you know, what their, pre not preferences, what their, what factors most strongly influence who they decided to buy, what they decided to buy. Um, so, the, so the answer to that question is yes, we have all that. Uh, it's not in this benchmark. It's in the, uh, it's in the customer study. And um, so I can see who asked the question. I will reach out directly to you, and uh, we can have a conversation about how we get you that research. Um, and I wanted, do you want to tackle the question, second question or let him tackle the third one for now? Sure. So the second question uh, is, which vendor type is best suited for operational BI and which is best suited for analytics associated with systems of engagement? Now I'm, I'm making an assumption here and this person can add, a, add another question to the chat if I'm wrong, but, but I believe you mean by operational BI is the more back office analytics, um, so more of a, um, uh, a BPO type um, analytics uh, software versus a system of engagement, which we're seeing as more of the, um, the customer uh, marketing sort of analytics. And honestly, um, I mean, we've talked about IBM. They they definitely speak to both of those um, both of those groups. They have their their uh, digital front office kind of offerings, and they have their more other operational um, uh, operational products uh, that are more for the CFO and for financial management. Um, so definitely IBM is, is one of them. Um, it, it's a tough question because I think that it's really more of a, a question of the software. Um, I think okay. certainly that the consultant-led vendors can speak a better story about the, the customer-facing analytics, but um, it's are as the tools. I'm yeah. Not sure if you have any thoughts on that. No, well, it's a good question. It's something we can uh, we can get back to you um, on with with a, a little bit more detail. And it's probably going to come from the the software side of our house here at TBR that that has a little bit more insight into that. Um, in the interest of time, we've got a few more questions out there, so we want to get to as many as we can. The, the one of the next questions in was how will Google and Amazon influence the channel of BI and the analytics. I'll turn to Matt for that. Yeah, Google and Amazon. Um, so Amazon, Amazon is going to influence the channel by basically not engaging with it too much. Amazon's main business on AWS is renting server storage and network space. And if they put analytics on top of that that allows them to monetize that infrastructure even more, they're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I actually think that Google and Amazon, given where they are in terms of what their portfolio is, could serve as an accelerator in this market. The reason being you can get some pretty easy, pretty rudimentary and basic analytics from Google that are, very, that are free and very easy to use. It can start to show you and unlock some of the use cases that you might want to go deeper with, and then you're going to end up with a more full-featured solution. So um, I'm not necessarily sure at this point in time that Google and Amazon um, have a, an analytics software portfolio that is at the level that it needs to be for genuine large enterprise grade uh, analytics capabilities. Not saying they can't get there, but um, I, you know, there, this market, as I said, it's maturing. It's got some very mature areas based on data warehousing. It's got some very immature areas. And I think that Google and Amazon are going to allow people to kind of put their toe in the water with a bunch of different things. So I'm kind of looking at them as an accelerator because they will show what can be done, you'll get real results, and then it'll be like, look, this is what we did, and if we went with this larger platform, this is what we could do. That's kind of how I'm viewing them. Whoever asked that question, feel free to reach out to me directly if you want to go deeper into why I think that. 
All right, lightning round. We've got three questions left to go through. We're going to do them as quickly as we can. Uh, how much of a read, uh, or do you have a read on how much artificial intelligence is a factor in BI services offerings? Well, I can tell you this. If we're going to talk about IBM, we can't avoid talking about Watson. I mean, it's there. It's part of what they talk about all of the time. Interestingly, one of the other vendors that uh, has popped up with a artificial intelligence focus uh, has been Wipro, which we don't actually have in the benchmark, uh, and that reflects the size of their BI services revenue. Um, I, you know, will that change over time? Possibly. Um, do we have a better read on how AI is figuring into services offerings? Not yet, and that's a great avenue for us to go down um, while we look at um, while we look while we continue to look at this space. And like I mentioned before, we need. We need guidance around what kind of issues should we be tackling. We're going to take AI as one of those uh, one of those areas. We'll go down, Jen. Uh, just one thing I would add to that is I think the place that we will see uh, AI coming into play is the operation management. Um, we you were seeing on the IT services level in the broader market that vendors are using uh, artificial intelligence um, uh, components in their ITO and their in their infrastructure management offerings. Um, and so I, I think CI services, you know, no exception to that. Anywhere where you can use uh, a program instead of a person to deliver the service, I think, is where vendors are going. Yeah. All right, we have another question here. It's, uh, is there a geographic breakdown to your analysis, or is it all at a global level? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So when we present these, uh, when we present, present these webinars, when we do these benchmarks like this, we don't actually give you the entire uh, the entire product, the entire benchmark. So one of the ways that we did look at um, look at the metrics here was by region. We we did it in three broad regions: the, the Americas and, and APAC and uh, EMEA. And you know, I can share that we we saw slower growth uh, in the Americas, and I think that reflects that initial shift from the software-led vendors to the services-led vendors. Um, and APAC was 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 getting killed. Actually, just like all the rest of IT services. Um, BI, that said, it still grew, and I'll give you that number in a minute. Um, EMEA was was the one that increased the most, and again, that reflects, I think, the overall growth in IT services uh, that's been coming out of EMEA over the last quarter. Um, very basic numbers. The, the Americas grew at about 15 percent. APAC grew at about 16 percent. That was down. I can't remember what it was down from. It was down from an, a high, much higher number. And then uh, EMEA grew at 19 percent. So yes, the answer is in the benchmark. There is a, a ton of data breaking all of this down by by region as well. Is there one last question before we're done? Yep, yeah, we got one more. Um, looking ahead, what do you see as the next big trend, trend in alliance relationships between the software vendors and service vendors? Each of the software vendors has gone as far as they can possibly go uh, in their in their. Well, they haven't gone. They they. they they're executing exactly the way that I expect them would. I expect the large software vendors to continue to enhance and push out their relationships with the global systems integrators. I expect Microsoft to continue to develop IP around best practices and then blast it through their channel. I expect that relationship is going to get deeper, fast over the next six to 12 months. Um, and so I think that it's not going to be a surprise to me uh, at some point when we present this benchmark and you see the market in terms of growth and operating margins being fully dominated by, you know, as I said, the, the high the high end uh, CNS GSIs, the um, Deloitte EY uh, CAP, um, et cetera, um, and then uh, some of the Indian players mixed in, um, but and then IBM. Um, but but I think that that's basically what's going on is software vendors make money selling software. Services are nice, but they make money selling software. Um, so I don't expect that to change. <clears throat> all right. Well, uh, thank you, Patrick, uh, Jen, and Matt. And uh, thank you, everyone, for all the questions you sent in. And I'd like to say you can um, follow Patrick, Jen, and Matt, and, our t and the TBR Twitter uh, handle on Twitter. Uh, the handle listed here. And uh, please check out our pages on SlideShare and YouTube as well. And that's where you can check out our previous webinars. Um, before you sign off, I'd like to ask you to take a brief, brief survey about the webinar today. Um, as we research performance of technology companies, we're also studying how we're helping our clients, and your feedback will be greatly appreciated. Uh, we'll leave the chat function open for another minute or so to give folks a chance to ask any last-minute questions, and uh, we hope to see you again next quarter.